Hey Jeanette, thanks hey. for joining me. Hey, thanks Claude. My thanks pleasure. For so before I jump into grilling you with a bunch of questions, um, I'll just kind of re remind you why we're here. Sure. Um, so my real estate team uh, covers the Leaside area. And what we like to do is, is get a hold of businesses in the Leaside area, as well as business owners who service the neighborhood and just get to know them and ask them kind of what their perfect clientele is, what got them into the business, um, and also ask them a little bit about what they like about the neighborhood. So that's kind of the order of what we're going to be doing today. Mm -hmm. um, so for the record, could you tell me your name and your business's name? Sure. My name is Jeanette Bicknell and my company is Bicknell Mediation. It's a really serious way for me to start this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so could you describe your business for me? Sure. So in a nutshell, I help people who don't get along. Maybe they're already heading for court, mm -hmm. in which case I'm retained by, by lawyers to do a mediation, um, hopefully to get them, to keep them out of court. Or I work with organizations, any organizations, um, companies, nonprofits, where they're not reaching their goals because of conflict. So I'm, I'm a little confused because you said lawyers would bring you in. Why would lawyers bring you in if they've already been hired to, to figure things out? Well, a couple reasons. Uh, good lawyers uh, know that sometimes you have to go to court, okay. absolutely. But if you can avoid court, it's going to save everybody uh, stress, money, and, and time. So sure. That's why. And in Toronto and uh, Windsor and Ottawa as well, you can't even get a court date without trying mediation first. Ah, so, okay. That makes yeah. sense. I guess that's good for your business. That's good for my business, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and you talked about mediating if lawyers bring you in or if an organization uh, brings you in. Um, what about when I'm showing houses and a husband and a wife can't agree on stuff? Would you me mediate well, at that level? <laughs> I, I could. I, I could. Um, typically, I'm, I'm brought in where there's uh, a lot at stake. Okay. Whether, so, husband and wife, um, hopefully with, with help from a good realtor, they could, they could work things out. But if it's more, if it's, let's say, several families arguing or if it's a neighborhood, uh, gets to a whole neighborhood dispute. And you may know, Claude, uh, the city of Toronto actually had a pilot project mm -hmm. using mediation to resolve disputes at the Committee of Adjustment. Oh, so stuff yeah. like encroachments and fences and things and like that? It's, uh, it, or it's they, um, people want a minor variance to build their house a little bit taller or right. a little bit wider. Yes, or yes I've, any, I've, yeah, I've come across that people, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been in this specific business? So I've been in this business about eight years now. Wow. Yeah. And what made you decide to get into mediation? So um, my background is as an academic. I was a philosophy professor for 10 years. And when I was a graduate student, I worked with someone who was interested in forgiveness and reconciliation. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So she had me looking up real world examples. So I learned about the South African Truth and Reconciliation mm -hmm. Commission, Australia's Stolen Children Project. Huh. And I learned about the power of ADR, alternative dispute resolution, and the wonderful things that could be achieved. And I, and I thought, you know, gee, maybe there'll be a point in my life when I, I can be involved in this as well. And then, so when I was looking for a career change, it was just a natural kind of thing for me to get into. And so I, I did the training, I went and took the, um, the, the training and the advanced training and everything that you could do. So you and I know each other, right. um, and I know you know that you get excited about being able to help people. Yeah, for sure. um, but maybe in your own words, you could tell me what drives you, what motivates you. Well, as I said, I I learned about the power of ADR, kind of through reading about it theoretically. But then when I got to see it in my own life and see how it affected people, it's been a huge motivator. Sometimes I'll be brought I'll be brought into a company and I'll help people in the workplace, and then later I'll hear back, not only are they getting along better at work, but their relations with their family. That's nice. Too. Yeah. So very fulfilling. This is very fulfilling. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, so shifting gears slightly, uh, mm -hmm. going to being a business owner, mm -hmm. what has, you've been at it for eight years, mm -hmm. what has surprised you most about uh, owning and running a business? Um, that's a great question because <laughs> I've had to learn so much. I, bet. I came from, you know, an academic background to this and I guess one of the biggest things I had to learn is I had this idea like 
if you build it, they will come. Of course. You just, have to be, you just have to be good at what you do and people will magically learn about that. I think that. that's the entrepreneurial motto, right? <laughs> if you build it, they will come. But I, I learned that, no, like you, if you have, if you believe in your services, you actually have a duty to get out there and to tell people sure. if you can help them. You know, you have a duty to spread the word and get people, yeah. To, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so just to summarize that, what surprised you quite a lot about running a business is, you know, you put up the shingle yeah. and, and people just don't pour in. That's right. Um, yeah. So that must yeah. require quite a bit of networking and, yeah. and marketing. Yeah. Networking, marketing. Yeah. yeah. Who are the best things. people, the best connectors for you as a, for your business? Um, so often I'm, I'm brought in by a company owner or, okay. or a business partner. Uh, other people who've referred me are uh, lawyers. Oh, yes. Is there any specific type of lawyer? Um, employment lawyers or just general litigation lawyers and, and accountants, I found. Huh. Yeah, because when people have a business problem of any kind, uh, one of the first people they call, it seems, is their accountant. Okay. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of trusted advisor trusted, relationship. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's something that most people don't know about your business? Are there assumptions that people have? Um, <laughs> assumptions. Uh, some people think, and I think some people hope, that I'm going to come in and tell them what to do. Major, wave a magic yeah, wand? Yeah, well, not, but I'm going to say, okay, now you have to do this and you sure. have to do that. But it's, it's and I, I suppose I could do that, but if you want to have a lasting solution, I find, it has to come from the people who are involved in the situation. So I help them get to that place. Because I find, you know, people are smart. People know their, their stuff. Sure. But sometimes they need a little help getting kind of working it out and getting there. So it's less about kind of saying you do that, you do that and everything will be fine. Yeah. And more about kind of, is it kind of like a psychologist? You kind of helping them realize themselves what needs to be done yeah, or what the truth yeah, is? Yeah, sort of, sort of like that. Okay. Helping them get to that place huh. them, themselves. Interesting. Because that way it's going to be more sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's going to kind of last in the long run. Yeah. And if we had a, a panel of your customers in front of us, what would they say they love the most about your business? Um, I think they like that I'm uh, very responsive. I get back to them right away. I think they like that um, I'm, quite, I'm quite calm mm -hmm. as a person, so they kind of already feel better talking to me, which is, which is great. Uh, and I think they like that I I don't push them. Uh, I don't push them into more services or more more interventions. Right. I, I I really try and assess kind of what they need and just leave it. To no them. no upsell. No upsell. Okay, no. that's good to know. <laughs> um, so here's one where I, I've never talked to you about this, okay. but I'm I'm hoping you've got a good story. What are what's what are some odd requests that you've had from clients, or would you be able to mention any? you know, work that you've done, kind of an odd dispute that you had to mediate without obviously naming names or details? Um, I was, uh, one that, that I, I think was interesting is uh, the business, the business, a business partnership that I help and I was brought in by the dad. I was, I of one of the business the, owners? Yeah, huh. of the two business owners. Oh, they're, okay. They're brother and sister. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of, kind of cute. That is that nice. The, yeah. That the, their dad was calling. That was that was kind of neat. Huh? Um, was I, the dad involved in the business? No. And he, but he just he saw this, yeah, this yeah, uh, yeah. high conflict. Yeah. yeah. And and it was affecting family dynamics. Of course. So he he didn't like that, and he told me that first he thought that he would try mediating mm -hmm. himself, but then he realized no, that probably wasn't a good idea. Interesting. Yeah. And the so another uh, dogs. Huh. Dogs in the work, dogs at the office. That, oh. that's a, that can be a source of tension. Interesting. Yeah. Are there any employment uh, regulations that say that they must be allowed or? No, I mean, employers have to maintain a, a safe workplace. So I suppose somebody could argue that the dog made it unsafe for them. Okay. But, but this wasn't at that level. So this was an employee who wanted to bring in a dog business or was it? Partners, business oh, okay. partners. Oh, okay. Jeez. Funniest things that we get, uh, yeah. get riled up about. Yeah. Um, so we're at the beginning of 2019 okay. and I'm wondering, do you have any business goals for the next year? Um, I'd like to do a, a bit better than last year. Okay. Yeah. And better for you, is it 
is it a dollar a figure? Is it number of people you've assisted? Um, is it speaking engagements? How do you quantify that? Um, well, the easiest way to to keep track is financially. Mm -hmm. So, but so what bring what leads to that? Is it is it number of engagements really? It's number of engagements, uh, length of engagements. Okay. Things, things like What's that. your? I, I didn't realize that there was a. I guess I should have realized there's a difference for you. How often are you? How long are you usually involved? Are you? Is it? On an hourly basis, could you be involved for days on end? Uh, yeah, I am often involved for days for okay. days on end. Um, it it really depends. Often, it, it's funny. I'll, I'll I'll be brought in for one thing. Maybe you know these two teams aren't working together, okay. and I'll help with that. And then I'll get another call. And also, these other two people in this department <laughs> aren't working together very well either. And so I'll maybe they I'll didn't really back. realize or believe in mediation, yes, and, then and then they saw they've seen the, the results. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, and and in, as a business owner, what are your greatest challenges? Um, that's a good question. I guess just always kind of getting the word the word out. Okay. Yeah. Um, being a mediator, it's a bit like being a marriage counselor. People don't want to always talk about that they've worked with. Sure. That they've worked with someone. So that that makes it more challenging. I also, I mean, for confidentiality reasons, I can't talk about a lot of my clients, right? right? I can't I can't name names. Sure. I, I can't talk about this, you know, big problem I helped them solve. Sure. So, so that's That's true. Now that I think about it, yeah. I guess most people wouldn't go to a cocktail party and say, "Who wants to hear about the time yeah, exactly. that me and my business partner yeah, almost like, killed each other <laughs> exactly. and then somebody flew in and yeah. saved us?" <laughs> That's true. Um, so a few more quick questions about sure. uh, your business. Um, uh, I'm, I'm curious w what the most memorable experience is that you have of working with a, uh, with a client. And it, memorable could okay. be a great, warm, yummy feeling in your tummy, mm -hmm. good, or kind of you cringe at the thought of that, of that memory. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess I... Okay. So one very good memory is I worked... Uh, with with a partner in a, a large industrial, basically a factory. Okay, and manufacturing. We were, yeah, manufacturing, okay. and we were doing conflict resolution training for the middle managers and the quality assurance people, and and again, this is we heard we we did the training. It was like six weeks training. We came in like every week for six weeks, and. We just had great feedback from that because not only was there a correlation with safety improvements sure. at the factory, but a lot of the men told us after that this had really helped them in their personal lives. Interesting. Yeah, so that was really rewarding. Okay. And, and a, a kind of a, crin, a cringy <laughs> one, and it's it's not cringy because of anything that happened at the mediation, but it was a personal injury mediation arising from a, a criminal assault Aye. yeah and um, it was two men who were strangers to each other and drinking oh yeah one had punched the other and the other had actually lost his eye oh yeah so jeez. yeah and so, so you were mediating what is it called like a civil settlement or a civil something settlement. like that okay yeah oh I yeah. just impressed myself is that the actual term yeah. I oh think wow. So, yeah, a civil, <laughs> personal injury yeah. settlement. And and yeah. you were able to I was, resolve I was all that. Successful. Yeah. And so that's interesting because I thought um, I would have thought that you you weren't really involved in monetary mon money related issues. Um, was there was there a component of that for them to be able to kind of shake hands and walk away from it, or okay. was it about figuring out? So they didn't shake hands because okay. they didn't see each other because ah. there was a risk of violence. So okay. I had to manage that very carefully. Sure. Yeah. So in, in civil mediation, uh, what people are often suing about is money. So whatever, whether it's an employment dispute or a personal injury or a business contract that's fallen down, the way to resolution is usually money okay. is in our system. Okay. So, so yes, so it's, I'm absolutely helping them negotiate and get to that, that monetary sum that will both can agree to. So it's very much, I guess, like what you do with, with houses. It's between the buyer and the seller sure. and making the right moves, negotiating to get to that. That's interesting though. That so you'd have sum. these two gentlemen in separate rooms or yeah. separate buildings separate. as far as you yeah. can from yeah. one yeah. another, I'm sure. Yeah. And then one would say, I want a million dollars for the eye, eye that I lost. Yeah. And then you'd bring that offer to the other one uh -huh. and he'd say, well, I only have a hundred thousand dollars. And yeah. you'd kind of go back and forth, kind of trying to 
say, well, that's unreasonable and that's a reasonable request from the other person? Yeah, well, more, uh, more than, because it doesn't matter what I think is reasonable sure. or unreasonable, it's, it's what they think is reasonable okay. or unreasonable. So, but, but yes, yeah, so, you know, what is, what is your offer going to be? Kind of discuss it with them and then present that offer to the other side, discuss, you know, and, and often, you know, people are working with lawyers who, and their lawyers help them get, sure. to, get to that, to get to that number. And I guess where I could add value is when it's coming in, when they're getting closer, but they're kind of not right. close enough. Like in my business, yeah. you get a buyer and a seller that are yeah. $10,000 apart on a $2 million property yeah. <laughs> and nobody's willing to budge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I need to bring you yeah. in. Um, so, so in, last thing about that situation, uh -huh. is it, would, would insurance companies ever be involved? Yeah, often in personal injury, it's okay. insurance companies who are who Very are neat. Involved, yeah. And so would they have representatives uh, present yep. as well? Yep, the adjuster. Wow. It's typically the adjuster. Say in a car accident situation, you don't, you rarely get the person, uh, the defendant who is driving the car. You get, okay. the, you get the insurance adjuster and their, right. their lawyer. Huh. But they still treat it like it's their money. Of course. So it's very interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. their job, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so just to wrap up about your business, is there anything exciting that you have planned for this year? Any specific types of mediations that you're hoping to do more of? Well, I've been doing uh, more workplace investigations okay. and post-investigation okay. mediations. So I guess I'm, I'm you know, looking forward to doing more of those. Okay, in, great. In the, yeah. Now, I was chatting with you a few weeks ago and you were mentioning that, um, if I remember properly, something about recreational properties. Right. Um, that you were enjoying yeah. doing. Yeah. What well, kind of disputes would you see around there? Well, you know, I think it's one of the dark secrets of Canadian life that <laughs> the cottages aren't actually ah. as fun as <laughs> sometimes they're made out to be and they sure. can be a source of stress. It's very relevant for a neighborhood like Leaside. Yes. I mean, it literally, um, I live in Leaside and it empties out yeah. on the weekends yeah, in the yeah. summer. <laughs> so, so what is it that you said so, dark secret? What's so happening? Well, imagine if like several families uh, share a cottage. So, I mean, there can be disputes about, you know, who, who pays for the repairs? When do the repairs get done? You have, you know, you, maybe you've got one co-owner who's very proactive and wants the roof done on schedule sure. and the other one's way over. Whenever. Weeks, whenever. Sure. Uh, you've got disputes over who can use it, when, when can they use it, what kind of cleanup is, in, I mean, all sorts of things. And then also, when is it time to get rid of? When is it time to sell? Sure. So all of these kinds of um, disputes about the cottage and, and I think um, families, uh, maybe it's because we're Canadian, we avoid conflict <laughs> often and we let things simmer until they get you know, pretty, pretty far gone. And I remember discussing this once, um, mentioning this at a, at a business meeting and somebody came up to me after and said that disputes over the family cottage was actually a big factor in her divorce. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So unreal. It, I know. So it really can uh, go too far, but you know, I can organize an afternoon uh, meeting of all the relevant people. I speak to them before, figure out kind of the parameters, what's going on. And, and then ev everyone sits down in a kind of friendly way and we come to some sort of agreement that's written up and everyone can in the future, you know, refer back to that agreement. Cool. Like a cottage yeah. sharing contract. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. And, yeah. and these disputes, are they often with um, family members? Like, so the parents allow use to their adult children and exactly. or there's an inheritance and then adult yeah. siblings are all trying to figure out. Exactly. And yeah. is it... Um, is it usually advisable if there are disputes that everybody's allowed to go at the same time? Or is it better to block off weekends and say, this is for adult sibling A, okay. adult sibling B, adult <laughs> well, sibling C? Well, I guess it, it depends on how big the cottage is. Okay. Yeah. But that's something that could be negotiated. Very neat. For neat. sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing about your okay. business. I'd like to Thank move you. on a little bit to, um, to, to the neighborhood in question, <laughs> Leaside. Um, so how long have you been kind of driving through Leaside and aware of it. Um, I know you don't li live in uh -huh. Leaside, but you service people in Leaside. Sure. Um, so how long have you been, has Leaside been on your radar? Oh, um, when I was in uh, university, I had a roommate who grew up in Leaside oh, yeah. and you know, she talked about it 
a lot with a lot of fondness. So it was always kind of in, in my mind, oh, Leaside, that's that cute little place. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably got to know it better as an adult. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. do I remember properly that when you were working um, on the pilot project with the city, uh -huh. that some of the disputes were taking place it, in Leaside? Yeah, some of the disputes were in, in Leaside. And yeah. was that usually about kind of the size that would be allowed to be added to a property? It was about, it was interesting, it was often about aesthetic disputes ah. and changes that would um, change the character of the neighborhood, gotcha. possibly. That makes sense. Yeah. We're very tight about our character yes. of, of yes. properties in yeah. Side. Yeah. Um, do you have, so not, not that, knowing that you don't live there, um, is there anything specific that you really like about the neighborhood? I like that, that it's really walkable. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Have you yeah. been on the street? Um, we've, well, we have a couple of them, but where you have huge, huge trees growing on either side of the street, and they kind of create a canopy yeah, that's in the neat. summer. Yeah. Um, I always find that yeah. I, I actually avoid driving down some of those streets because mm -hmm. I find people are taking pictures <laughs> when it's <laughs> just the right color of, uh, of, well, of leaves. And speaking of trees, if anybody uh, in the, these committee of adjustment things, if people wanted to cut down a tree, that's like a huge source of... Ah conflict so yeah. so is it people arguing that maybe the tree is partially on their property and they had a, a right sometimes uh -huh. yeah or sometimes even if it's not on their property that the tree that it should be stopped somehow it that, belongs to the neighborhood it, yes exactly okay. or yeah. I benefit from the shade yeah. of the tree yeah. okay yeah. Um, and and over the years that you've been aware of Lee side and in and out of it um, have you noticed any significant changes I guess new businesses are coming up yeah, all the time. Yeah. It, it yeah. has been transitioning a lot. So, yeah. so east of Laird was historically known as a very industrial neighborhood. Right. And so the retail yeah. strip would really be Bayview, for yeah. example. Um, but with the redevelopment of Laird, it's interesting because we have an enormous amount of retail now. So it's, it's kind of neat that it used to just be the destination if you wanted to walk along somewhere yeah. or, or go shopping. Yeah. It, would be, uh, it would be along Bayview. And now there's, there's more choice. So people mm -hmm. are hitting the Laird strip. Sounds odd to say it that way. Um, so, so do you have a, an opinion as to why it's important for people to shop locally or, or use a local service provider, somebody who knows about the neighborhood? Sure, I, I think it's, um, yeah, just to support, support your local businesses, it's supporting your neighbors because, I mean, if we don't support our local businesses, who, who else is going to, right? Sure, so, very so true. So for an economically healthy, if, if you don't want to see kind of shuttered yeah. storefronts yeah. yeah it happens uh, unfortunately too often these yeah. days uh, what are some of your favorite places to to visit in Leaside the fish and chips shops oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're famous I think I used to think it was just Toronto and I was talking to somebody from Barrie oh, uh, wow. of all places yeah. who said that when he comes to Toronto yeah. that's his his yeah. go-to destination yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know you're you're pretty outdoorsy um, do you ever make it you said it's a walkable neighborhood Do you ever mm. make it through to Leaside in the summer Oh, sure, yeah. 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 Very good. Um, all right. Do you have any questions for me? You know that I'm a real estate broker. I run mm -hmm. a real estate team. Um, do you have any questions for me about real estate? So how do you handle it when disputes come up, either with between buyers and sellers or maybe with a, a couple who you're helping? Well, usually I slam my hand down on the table <laughs> and I say, look, sign it or... No, I'm, uh, it's interesting. I, I probably have used the term marriage counselor more than I have mediator, but mm. I, I think we do often, uh, a good broker does mediate quite often. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really about, I, I hope, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm at the feet of the master here, I hope that you would agree that it's about figuring out what's very important to either party. Yeah. Hopefully they're slightly different things, mm -hmm. so that you know, if, if one's saying, I want a small house, the other one's saying, I want a big house, then it gets a little challenging. Right. Yeah. Um, but if one is saying, well, I'd like a house that's in this neighborhood uh -huh. and I don't really care if it's big or small, and the other party is saying, I want a normal two-story house, right. don't care what neighborhood it's in, then we can find common ground. Right. Um, I think a lot of the time in the heat of the moment, things get, get uh, pretty, pretty heated up. So for example, I really don't like having kind of in-depth discussions about properties when we're in the property. Right. Um, yeah. So I say, you know, let's let's see it the first time. Everybody go home. Uh, maybe we come see it a second time. But at some point, we have to have a almost dispassionate um, right. uh, discussion. Yeah. yeah. And I'm forever telling people that the word love does not exist, should not exist in real estate, mm. because as soon as some I hear somebody say, "I love this house mm -hmm. or this condo mm -hmm. or whatever it is," 
I say that word is going to cost you so much money. Mm -hmm. um, let's just put that aside. Mm -hmm. I understand that you would really like this property, right, right, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. unless you have an unlimited budget, we have right. to be very careful yeah. um, with yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, do you have That's any tips good. for me uh, on how to handle real estate disputes? I guess the only thing I would say is to, and you, you probably do this, is to try and dig a little under the surface. So if somebody says they want a small house, like right. figure out why. Why is that? Yeah, is sure. it because they don't want to clean it? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, or, maybe they, they're yeah. afraid that in a few years they won't, won't be able to take the stairs. And yeah. so maybe I need to sh shift their attention to a condo. To a condo. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point. Yeah. Okay, good question. Jeanette, thanks okay. for your time. Thank you, Claude. Really nice to see you.